Aquarius, hello there, my beautiful friends. We're going to do your general tarot reading for late May, moving into early June 2024. Thank you so much for joining me today. You know I appreciate each and every single one of you. So let's get right down to business, as always, and start you off with an oracle card here, just so we can dip our toes in the energy and see what's happening for the beautiful Aquarius Collective. Hope you're all feeling fabulous and fantastic, my friends. Let's get it going. My gods and spirit team, talk to me about Aquarius, my good friends here. What messages, energies, insights do we have for late May, early June? It's Gemini season. And yeah, we're just going to take a real quick look at this first card. Then we'll get into the full reading itself. And at the very end, I'll pull you a bonus card from the Shadowland Tarot. Just to see what might be in the shadows or what shadow work you can lean in on, which is always interesting. Uh, let's get it going here. Let's rock and see what we got for Aquarius, please. Late May, early June, please. What's going on? What messages? There we go. Nice and quick. Okay, high priestess energy. So there is a very strong energetic sensitivity around you in this time. Your intuition could be trying to tell you something as well. Um, I like her, okay? Especially like first and foremost, because it could tell us that your instincts are on point about something. Now, before we fully dive into that, if you're new here, I'll be speaking about the May subscriber surprise towards the end, so you might want to check that out. Also, if you could kindly illuminate that like button, but tapping it right on its third eye, you know, I'd greatly appreciate it. But enough of the promo into the reading. Let's talk a little bit more about this picture. Now, yes, I'm not using a tarot deck just yet. It's an oracle. But when I see the symbolism in this card, this image, it just screams high priestess to me. We have this older divine feminine wise character right here. She's next to a crystal ball with a key. There's a lockbox next to her as well. And a big aspect of the high priestess is divine wisdom, sacred knowledge. And this card just screams that to me. So what are some things that we could think of when the high priestess is leading off a reading? I already gave you a few hints and clues for a portion of you might be connected to Pisces or even another water sign. I think they all have similar traits. So that could be highlighted in this time. But to me, she's all about intuition and energe energetic sensitivity so whether you're a person that has like really strong energetic gifts like you might just feel something in the air or your gut might be trying to tell you something i would listen to it when the high priestess energy is here for a portion of you maybe you're picking up the feelings and energies of those around you and you don't even realize it so maybe ground yourself or protect yourself energetically and meditate whatever way you want to do it Another thing with the High Priestess is she is a card of the unknown. There's a little mystery involved with her. So if none of those other messages are really valid for you, there could just be something coming towards you that you don't really have too much foresight about. So we'll see what's up. Let's put her down right there. Let's get into Tarot now. And I always say the first card it doesn't make or break the reading. It's just a little footnote. So let's get you three Tarot cards in the upright. Then we'll get into that intuitive juiciness. Shuffle it up one time here for Aquarius and see what's happening in late May, early June, please and thank you. And while we get this deck shuffled up and ready to go, let's talk about last week's reading. Now, it was titled An Explosive Talk, and there were a lot of energies and cards surrounding communication. That's been a big air sign thing in recent weeks. But there was a peculiar little aspect to your reading last week. There were a lot of aces. I think there were like three or maybe even all of them showed up at one point. Maybe it was three. But just the way it showed up to me, it was like ace, 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 super strong. So for a lot of you, if it wasn't some sort of situation involving communication, I feel for a lot of you, there's a very bright opportunity or offer coming your way and we'll see if that presents itself again this week as you know energy is very fluid it's never set in stone so only take that out it hits for you because we could be seeing your vibe or someone that you're linked to let's get it going let's get three cards here for aquarius gods and spirit team i feel like i needed to give it a few extra shuffles there so what do we got thank you sun good all right so i'm gonna hold the commentary for now I mean, that is the card of your zodiacal opposite. That's Leo energy showing up here. And the sun is the most positive card in the whole entire deck. But for some reason, I feel like I shouldn't go over the moon just yet. Let's get one more. What do we got here? Thank you. There it is. All right, so we do have the tower. So maybe this is a good tower, hopefully. Fingers crossed. And, you know, let's just keep going. Because still, I feel like I... There's something in the energy that's telling me, like, listen, don't flap your gums too much at Kyle. Don't, don't over talk it. Don't assume. Like, for some reason, I'm getting that energy here strongly. Like, don't assume. Don't assume. Don't assume. So maybe for some of you, that's something you should keep in mind as you go through the next few days. Like, 
Okay, nine of pentacles. All right, so I feel now that we have the main part of the spread, that this tower, this shock in the center, isn't anything that's going to completely throw you off your pegs. I feel like this could actually wind up being a very good thing. So let's go through. I'll give you some of the classical meanings and archetypes, and we'll get into that juicy, intuitive stuff. So at first look, first glance here, Aquarius, I mean, we have a mixed bag to say the least, right? We look down here, we have two of the most powerful major arcana starting us off here with the sun, very positive. And then we have the shock of the tower coming in. Then we have the sturdiness. So it's like we have a little bit of everything. It's like we have the good, bad in between. It's like we have very soothing and calm, crazy, hectic, very firm. It's like everything is happening here. So a little bit of everything. I'm hoping you're not going through a bit of a roller coaster during this time. But let's go through. Because I really do feel so far that this tower, this shocking energy could be very good. Let's go through piece by piece and really start to build it out. Though. So position number one, we have the sun. Now, I already gave you some of the meanings of this card. Now, it could just be a Leo that you're connected to. They are represented by the sun card. It is the singular most positive card in the whole entire deck. I think most readers would agree on that. When I see the sun, I think of light, life and love that shines on us from spirit. This is source-based energy. Here. So I love the sun. To me, it is, it's everything, right? So it could represent blessings, it could represent winds, it's just warm, it's embracing, it's, it's all encompassing, it's just really beautiful type of energy, and it's light, it's pure light. So there could be something really amazing coming down the pipeline here. Another aspect of the sun it could represent things being revealed because nothing can hide under the rays of the sun. So there could be certain things that you're scrutinizing in this time. If there's situations that you're taking a look at or scrutinizing, things might come to light or things that you didn't quite know, because remember we had that high priestess energy could pop up. So whether it is revelations or the unexpected, we're just going to have to see because we do have shock right next to it. Now, for a lot of you, this can be a really good thing. Moving over to the second position, we do have the tower. Now, this card gets a bit of a bad reputation, rightfully so. I mean, normally this card shows up when people are going through some really difficult times. It's Scorpio energy. And I'm a little biased when it comes to Scorpio energy. That's my moon sign. So I think of Phoenix energy. Like, yeah, this tower, it's coming down, but eventually it'll get rebuilt. Like, to me, this could be somebody hitting a reset button on something. But the tower is a card of shock. And despite the scary imagery, I always like to mention that not every tower is a bad tower. Not every shock or surprise is a bad surprise. It could be very good. And flanking this tower are two positive cards. But the clarifier is going to be the most important. Remember, when this card shows up, it's not like a permanence to it. It's just that something needs to be remade or just something surprised you out of nowhere. Okay, something needed to come down for whatever reason. Okay. Another thing I always like to say about the tower, it is also a phallic symbol. So this could represent your own energy and vitality. And when we mix the sun with the tower, there's a burning hot type of energy here for a lot of you might need some sort of release and i don't mean it in that way aquarius it could be through sport it could be through creativity there's just like a an energy building 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 here now on to the back end we do have the nine of pentacles very sturdy very independent type of energy and i know since i know so many beautiful aquariuses in my personal life that aquarian energy is one of the most independent in the whole entire zodiac i mean a lot of signs have little streaks of it here but aquarian even though they're about the people are very independent um and unique and this card does encapsulate that to me even though it's of earth when i see this i do think of things regarding the material assets so money what you do for work business ideas and this is a card of blessings and abundance, and I really do like it. Um, or once again, this is lone wolf independence. Like, I got this. I'm going to be good. So when I see it next to the tower, it's like, okay, yeah, the tower happened, but I'm fine. It's like, yeah, all this stuff happened, but I'm good. Don't worry about it. It's kind of giving me that type of energy. But another thing I will say about the Nine of Pentacles is that it can represent someone that's a little bit stubborn. So with all that being said, I want to dive deeper on all of it. Let's jump in and clarify. Let's get a good shuffle here for my Aquarians, please. And yes, this is where I go intuitive with the message, which means I just tell you how it feels to me. So feel free to do further research or rely on your base knowledge of tarot, because as you know, every single reading is about the reader's interpretation, and I'm just giving you mine. Let's go in on the sun. And yes, if you're a reader yourself, please feel free to play along. That's why the box is here. If you're feeling any messages you want to give to Aquarius, you could drop it in the comments. I don't mind at all. Okay, 
Let's see what the sun has for us. Quick. All right. So seeing the brighter side of a situation, seeing the brighter side of something. For a lot of you, if you've been a little down in the dumps or if there's been a situation or something that's been a bit of a drag or if you've been in a slump or you feel like you've been in a, a low time for whatever reason, because life is all about the ebbs and flows. When I see the sun with the five of cups in reverse, this is the sun rising on a new day, which I, I know it sounds a little poetic, but it, it feels beautiful to me. Five of cups in reverse is the best way we want to receive this card. So when I see these together, I'm obviously seeing a win off the jump or at the very least, somebody looking towards something in an optimistic fashion, saying like, okay, well, the worst of it's over. That's kind of the vibe I'm picking up. Like, yeah. I felt this way for a long time, but now it's in reverse. I'm healing from this. The worst of it's over. So I do really like this. For a lot of you, this could be our very first winner victory within this spread because it's something that is going to make you happy. So I do feel for a lot of you, if you've been feeling a little stuck in the rut, this is really good. Okay, it's like a good change or once again, a winner or victory. And when we combine it with what I was seeing for you last week, it, it makes me extra happy because we were seeing so many aces last week and so much talking. But now this is like, okay, something's actually going to start coming to fruition. So just know that like something's going to actually start to develop and come to fruition. Let's keep moving forward. Yeah, and I just feel like I need to give that message like the worst of something's over. But let's see what the tower has to say, because that could just be a thought that somebody was having. Uh, let's go in on that tower. Let's see what this shocking energy is about. Quick, very, very quick. Unplanned. Okay, yeah, we have the two of wands in reverse, so it makes sense. Now, whenever I see the two of wands, I always say that is one of my cards of like decision making, choices, being at a crossroads, but it is also one of the bigger cards of strategy and planning. So the fact that we have it in reverse under the tower, that makes complete and total sense. So whether this is somebody doing something that you didn't expect, like a shocking action or just an unplanned tower moment or event, it makes complete sense. Because it's like, okay, well, just when I was starting to feel good about it, or just when I was starting to feel better, boom, this tower comes in. But I will say this, on the back end, we have this beautiful sturdy card where it's like, okay, you're, you got this, you're fine. Don't worry about it. Another thing I will say, this could be a shocking win. Depending on what comes out with this Nine of Pentacles, like the way this energy is flowing and the unplanned aspects of this tower, it could be something getting better much quicker than you thought it would, where it's like, okay, I'm starting to make a turnaround, I'm starting to turn the corner, and then it's like, ba -ba boom this tower comes in and things could start to skyrocket. So we'll see what that Nine of Pentacles has to say. But yeah, once again, this two of wands in reverse underneath this tower it could also be spirit saying like, OK, well, if you're not going to decide what to do, I'm going to decide for you, which is a little harsh. It sounds a little mean, but that's the message I got. So I'm going to give it to some of you that may need to hear it where it's like, OK, well, if you don't do nothing about it, I'm going to do something about it. Let's keep moving because it's still a little a little difficult for me to discern if this tower is fully good or if it's fully rough. It might be a bit of both. Right. Let's see what that nine of pentacles has to say. I mean, it could just be a shocking situation in the center as well. I know I already mentioned something similar. It could just be something that popped in out of nowhere or something that like threw you off a little bit. But let's go in on that nine of pentacles. Then we'll do our recap before we get into the shadow card. OK, no. Yeah. Now we have another ace showing up for you. So it showed up for you all last week. It's showing up for you now. This is good. So I will say for a lot of you, this could be a situation that really does start to skyrocket for you that like improves drastically quick so once again it could be a shocking win where it's like okay well i was starting to feel better but i had no idea it would pick up steam this quick and get this good so i feel for a lot of aquarians doesn't matter where you're at in life right now you could start seeing an upward tick whether it's in work whether it's in relationships something can improve in big leaps and bounds here and i would claim this energy honestly now the ace of cups it could represent love um yeah, it could represent one's emotion. So when I see it under the Nine of Pentacles, very sturdy, stable emotions. If you're wondering if someone still has similar feelings like this is like, yeah, this person's feelings are unchanged. They still feel a certain way about something. But I just feel like this is someone who's emotionally OK with how something went down. OK, or they're they're accepting it at the very least. But I feel for a lot of you, there's the best is yet to come. 
if that makes sense. Like, that's another vibe I'm picking up. So many different messages are, like, getting peppered in here, which is the oddest thing. But let's go through and do a quick recap. Then we'll get into the shadow card. Overall, I feel like this is a claimable read. But in position number one here before the shadow, we have the sun card, the best card in the whole entire deck with the five cups in reverse. If you've been in a slump or if you've been feeling a little down or if you've been healing from something, the worst of it's over. I feel like it's a little reassurance from spirit, from source. And I feel like a lot of you, you might start feeling revitalized in the coming days and weeks. Like it's a nice burst of energy starting to come forth. And it could happen quicker than you think, because as we move over, we have the tower with the two of wands in reverse. So whether it is a shocking situation or just something that pops in out of nowhere that you're dealing with, I don't feel completely throwing you off, like off your life's course. If you are starting to make a turnaround, a lot of you, it could be much more drastic than you think it will, or just something goes from zero to 100. And I feel like for most of you, it's moving in a positive way if you're not dealing with someone dropping a tower on you. But even if that is the case, on the back end, we have the Nine of Pentacles with the Ace of Cups, beautiful type of energy here. So I feel for a lot of you, it's very sturdy, stable, moving towards a very positive place. So there could be a shocking wind coming up here where it's like, all right, I didn't think it would get this good this quick. I really like this. But there's a lot of nice emotional stability here as well. Okay, so I, I like it. I like the trajectory. Please take a screenshot. Let's see what's in the shadows for you, though. And shuffle it up one time. I mean, I know there was a lot of messages I was getting in little sayings that I didn't say in the recap, but I felt like this energy was free-flowing. Okay, so let's see what's in the shadows. And I always like to pull one shadow card at the very end just to see whether it's something within you or something you don't quite see. Shadow cards don't always have to be a challenge. They could be a really good thing, too. So let's get you one. And yes, if you've made it to this point in reading, please feel free to check out channel memberships. I'll put a link for it in the comments below. It's a beautiful way to support the channel, and I have much love for all my channel members. I really do. Okay, shadow card time. Shadow card time. Thank you. The Wheel of Fortune. All right, so this is another clue and a little more reiteration from Spirit that this tower is not necessarily a bad one. It, it doesn't feel like a major warning, something we have to like really be super concerned about because we have the four-leaf clover, the good luck charm of the tarot deck showing up in the shadows. This is a beautiful place to receive this. Now, one thing I will say when the Wheel of Fortune shows up in the shadows, it does move very suddenly, similar to the tower, where it's something that shifts, some, something that changes rather quickly. Know for a lot of you, situations and things could evolve very rapidly in this time, or like extremely suddenly and quickly when we have the Wheel of Fortune. But I feel luck is on your side. Like when we overlay it on everything that we have going on here, I feel like everything's moving the way it's supposed to. And these are good energies. These are good things, even if they feel a little bit uncomfortable from time to time. I really like this Wheel of Fortune. Just know a lot of you could be going through a very powerful change, even if you don't see it, even if you don't realize it right now, because that's another thing that the Wheel of Fortune could represent. So, yeah, Aquarius, that's what I have for you this week, my beautiful friends. Don't click away just yet, though. I'm going to give you the details of the May subscriber surprise. If you would like to book a one-on-one -on -one personal reading with me, you could check out my digital calendar at mastermetaphysics.com. But for the May subscriber surprise, we're doing a winner's choice this month, my friends. Two lucky subscribers will get their choice of either the Everyday Witches Tarot, which is a wonderful deck. It's one of my favorites. Or you can choose a crystal pendant of your choice from my website. They're homemade. The energy is luscious. They're beautiful. So it's winner's choice there. So if you'd like to get your name in for that, it's two simple things, as always, my friends. First, you must be subscribed. And second, let me know down in the comments where in the world you are from. You don't have to give me your home address or anything like that. It could be your country, state, province, whatever it might be. You'll be entered to win. And at the end of the month, the winners will be announced in my community tab. As always, my friends, much love. And I'll see you again soon.